If you're a Star Wars fan, I am positive that you've heard of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Well, the old one. Being one of the most popular Star Wars games ever made, it still has a very cult-like following. And since the multiplayer lobbies were put back up in 2017, you can still find multiplayer lobbies that have 30 plus people in them. That and there's still a tremendous modding community out there that keeps this game fresh. And now that the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection has been announced, I think now would be a perfect time to look back at Star Wars Battlefront 2 since I already looked back at the first game. So let's get right into it but like always remember to go ahead and like and subscribe it really helps the channel out and go ahead and hit that bell icon too to get notified whenever i put new stuff out but without further ado let's get right into the video Returning as the developer, Pandemic Studios came back and made Star Wars Battlefront 2 one year after the original game released. Coming off the success that the first game had, they decided to pretty much revamp everything from the first game and add a ton of new features that the first game didn't have. One of the biggest keys to this game's success though was that it was released as a tie-in game for Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith that was coming out later that year. And since that movie was probably one of the most hyped Star Wars movies of all time, that alone greatly boosted this game's sales. And since since this was a tie-in game for Revenge of the Sith, this gave us a ton of teasers for the new movie. Cool things like new locations and new soundtracks were added to this. Our first introduction to the Phase 2 clone troopers was in this, leaving the only time that we get to play as a Phase 1 clone trooper is in a training level. Entire plot points were put in this game too, like in a campaign mode where you follow a 501st clone trooper through Order 66 all the way up to the Galactic Civil War. This has to be one of the best Star Wars stories ever put in a video game. You follow a 501st clone trooper as he tells a story about his and his whole unit's struggle with carrying out Order 66, and as they were transitioned into stormtroopers during the Galactic Civil War. In this, you play through many notable events like the Battle Over Coruscant, the raid on the Jedi Temple, a clone uprising on Kamino, a prison break on the Death Star that might have an early rendition of Starkiller, the opening scene of A New Hope on the Tantive IV as you try to find the secret plans, and you end off by destroying the rebel base on Hoth. This campaign was really good, and I actually kind of wish we would have gotten a campaign campaign mode for the other three factions, but it's understandable in the time constraints that they had that we only got this one and at least it was really good. Maybe if we would have gotten Battlefront 3 we would have got those other three campaigns, but sadly we'll never know. The other game modes also return too, like obviously Instant Action and Galactic Conquest also makes for return and has been improved from the other game. It has four different scenarios you can play through, and those four scenarios are the Birth of the Rebellion, Republic Sovereignty, Dark Reign of the Empire, and the Confederate Uprising. But the only one that actually follows canon is Birth of the Rebellion. Now, like I said in the video about Star Wars Battlefront 2004, I don't really play this game mode a whole lot. I should, because I have heard that this game mode is really fun, but I just don't play it near enough. Now, whether you're in the campaign mode or just playing Galactic Conquest, the battles are the same as if you just went into instant action and started a battle there. But the battles themselves have been changed quite a bit from the last game, so let's get into that. The normal battle mode from the previous game returns relabeled as Assault, as the developers added four new battle types to this game. The first one that we'll go over is Captured Flag, and actually there's two different versions of this game mode too. One that only has one flag and then one that has two. The one flag Captured Flag game mode only has one neutral flag and both factions have to do what they can to get that flag and bring it to the center of the map. But on the other hand, the two flag Captured Flag game mode requires you to go capture a flag from the enemy's base and bring it back to yours. Kind of resembling a normal Captured Flag mode. But to be honest, whenever I play multiplayer, I would just rather play the assault game mode because it's really hard to get everybody on page to actually play capture the flag so it normally just ends up being a death match anyway the next mode that we're going to talk about is the hunt mode and pretty much all this is is that it pins a major faction against a certain planet's native faction so say like the clone troopers against the geonosians or the rebel alliance against the wampas and this can actually be pretty fun and it's actually one of the only ways outside of modding to actually play as a planet's native species so that is pretty nice <laughs> Now, if you're like me and only ever played the campaign mode or just joined popular multiplayer lobbies on the PC, this next game mode you probably never even noticed. What is that you might ask? Well, that's the XL game mode. Despite it only being on PC because of hardware limitations, literally all this does is that on certain maps you're allowed to have 300 units instead of 180. And to be specific, Kashyyyk, Hoth, and Geonosis are the only three maps that allow you to do this. This is one of those online multiplayer oriented modes to give people an opportunity to have 
much longer battles on certain maps. But it's also on the three largest maps in the game, so a lot of it has to do with having more units on the map at one time. But as long as you're on PC, I guess, I guess it's a pretty cool game mode. And maybe they'll just add this for all the maps in the new game whenever it comes out. Now before I go ahead and move on to the unit classes, let's go ahead and mention the space battles before I forget to even talk about them. While yes, the first game did have some space vehicles, this game took that to a whole nother level. That was another big selling point of this game is that there was space combat in this. And to be honest, in the trailers it looked really cool. Now in reality it was extremely repetitive. I mean don't get me wrong, the mechanics of the vehicles were phenomenal, but the way that you actually fought the battles in this was extremely repetitive. You either invaded another enemy ship or just destroyed enemy ships. That's the only two things you really did. Other than that, you just flew around and destroyed enemy fighters and didn't contribute to the battle. Now I still think it was really cool and there was a lot to build off of if we would have ever gotten Battlefront 3, but sadly we didn't and this kind of still is a little bit stale. Now I'm probably in the minority on this and I'll probably hear about it in the comments, but it's my opinion so oh well. But off to the next thing which are the unit classes. And believe it or not, these have kind of stayed the same, barring a few changes like different unit designs and an extra special unit type. Other than that, these are still pretty similar to the first game. But let's go over them anyway. The first unit that we're going to go over is just the basic infantry unit. These are just your basic troop to troop combat units, but in certain situations, whenever they're in groups, they can be effective in other areas. Albeit, that can be extremely rare though. Other than that, their main purpose is just to take down other infantry units and to support other more specialty units. But like in all of the other unit types, there are differences depending on factions, so let's go over those. The Galactic Republic obviously has just your regular clone trooper, and he carries a DC-15 blaster rifle with a DC-15S blaster pistol and V1 thermal detonators. Now, unlike what we saw in the movies and the Clone Wars TV show, the Separatist main infantry unit in this game was the Super Battle Droid. He has a wrist blaster with the tri-shot ability and a wrist rocket, and out of the three other infantry units in this class, this one is definitely the most overpowered. It's pretty much an infantry unit mixed with the heavy weapons class. And that's why whenever I'm forced to play with the Separatist, I either play as the Super Battle Droid or the Sharpshooter. The Rebel Alliance has the Rebel Soldier, and he has a DH-17 blaster rifle with a DL-44 blaster pistol and Class A thermal detonators. Other than the different variants that you get with the Rebel Soldier, depending on what map you're on, which we will talk about later, there's nothing really that special about this unit, so we're just going to go ahead and move on to the Empire. The Empire obviously has the Storm Trooper, and he has the E-11 blaster rifle with an SE-14R light repeating blaster pistol or a scout trooper blaster pistol with beradium core thermal detonators. And if you guys are wondering where I'm getting this information, I'm just on the Wikipedia page reading it off there. There's no way I would know this stuff. And out of all of the other infantry units, I just find the stormtrooper to be the weakest out of all of them, mainly because he's just the most boring. That and I find the E-11 blaster rifle to not really be that powerful, so yeah, there you go. Now the next unit type is the heavy weapons class, and this is pretty much an anti-vehicle unit, but you can also use it to kill masses of infantry units, but it's mainly just an anti-vehicle unit. Now, I don't really play as this unit very often, so I don't have much to say about each of these ones, but I will go over what these guys are equipped with. And starting with the Galactic Republic, you have the Heavy Clone Trooper with a PLX rocket launcher, a DC-15S blaster pistol, V1 thermal detonators, and HX-2 mines. And moving on to the Separatist, you have the Assault Battle Droid with an E-60R rocket launcher, an SC-14 blaster pistol, V1 thermal detonators, and HX-2 mines, similar to what the clone Heavy Trooper had. The Rebel Alliance has the Rebel Vanguard with an HH-15 rocket launcher, a DL-44 heavy blaster pistol, Class A thermal detonators, and 3HX-3 mines. And lastly, we have the Galactic Empire with the Shock Trooper. He has a PLT rocket launcher, an SC-14R light repeating blaster pistol, or a Scout Trooper pistol, Beradium core thermal detonators, or KE-6B mines. I will say whenever I play as the Galactic Empire, I do actually sometimes play as the Shock Trooper, especially if you're on the Tanth of Four, because it's just fun blowing enemy units up. So now off to my favorite unit, the Sniper class. And yes, I am that person in the multiplayer lobby that is sniping you from all the way across the map. And to be honest, I love all of these faction sniper units pretty much equally. They all do pretty much the same thing. But let's go over them anyway for the sake of just going over them because I'm doing it for everybody else. Starting again with the Galactic Republic, and they have the clone sharpshooter. He has a DC-15X sniper rifle with the DC-15S blaster pistol, V1 thermal detonators, and an auto turret. The Separatists have the Assassin Droid with an E5S sniper rifle, an SC-14 blaster pistol, V1 thermal detonators, and an auto turret. Kind of similar to the Assault class, this unit is still pretty similar to the clones. The Rebel Alliance 
Alliance has the Rebel Marksman. This unit has an E17D sniper rifle, a DL44 heavy blaster pistol, Class A thermal detonators, and an auto turret like the other ones. And the Galactic Empire has the Scout Trooper with an E11S sniper rifle, an SC14R light repeating blaster pistol or a Scout Trooper blaster, radium core thermal detonators, and like the other three units in this class, also has a auto turret. Alright, so here's another unit class that I have pretty much no experience with, and that is the Engineer class. Now between all the factions, there's not too much of a difference between all the units in this class. They all carry an F-187 fusion cutter, a detonation pack, and health and ammo dispensers. So the only real thing that separates them is the weapons that they're using, so let's go over that. The Galactic Republic has the Clone Engineer with the shotgun. The Separatists have an engineer droid that also carries a shotgun. The Rebel Alliance has the Rebel Smuggler with a CR-1 blaster cannon. And the Galactic Empire has the Imperial Engineer with a blast cannon. The only thing I really find useful about these units is that they can go around and repair med and ammo stations. Other than that, the ones that have a shotgun kind of can be okay, but other than that I just typically never play as them. Alright, so now we're off to the special unit type, but unlike the last game, where you only had one special unit type, this game added a second extra special unit to give you some more variety. Now, some of these are really good, and some of these aren't really that good. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of them. The Galactic Republic has the Clone Commander and Jet Trooper. The Clone Commander has a chain gun, a DC-15S blaster pistol, a Mark IV recon droid, and also has a rally ability that gives a defense increase to all the troops around you. Now, me personally, I've never really cared about playing as this character. I always find a chain gun to be really hard to use. I know some people say it's a really good weapon and they love using it, but really, it's not for me. I don't really like using it. But he's definitely not the worst character in the game, though. The Jet Trooper, though, on the other hand, has an EMP launcher, a DC-17 blaster pistol, and V1 thermal detonators. And obviously, a along with his jetpack. And believe it or not, this is actually a really good character to use, especially on a map like Camino, where you can quickly traverse the map just by using the jet trooper just to skip along these bridges. That and the EMP launcher kind of acts like a grenade launcher too, so it's really useful on that front. So in my opinion, the best special class for the Republic is obviously the jet trooper. But as we move on to the Separatists, you have the Magna Guard and the Droidica. And these are actually two very good units. The Magna Guards have RLR missiles that can lock on to pretty much anything and just destroy them. But they also have a radiation launcher and neuro poison that they can use, and the addition of the Mark IV recon droid. So this is actually a really good unit to use. Just about as good as the Droidica, with its two mounted blasters and a personal shield that it carries around. I mean, heck, besides whenever you're just rolling around the map, you can just put these shields up and just mow down as many troops as you want. I mean, after a while, they will gang up on you and take down your shields, and after your shields go down, you don't last very long. But in the moment, the Droidica can be extremely overpowered. The Rebel Alliance has the Bothan Spy and the Wookiee Warrior. The Bothan Spy is okay, I guess. His main weapon is an incinerator, which is mainly a short-range weapon, but if you can get a good shot, it is very useful. He can also regenerate his health, and he has the stealth ability, and he also has the TB-47 Time Bomb, which, since we're not really in a campaign mode, the only thing you'll be taking out with this is just turrets. I guess he's okay, but the Wookiee Warrior is a lot better, though. On top of his really good stamina and extra health, the Wookiee has a bowcaster, an HH-4 grenade launcher, class A thermal detonators, and a Mark IV recon droid, making the Wookiee one of the most OP units in the game. I mean, heck, the bowcaster's a really good weapon by itself, but that grenade launcher's a lot of fun to use. But lastly, we have the Empire with the Imperial Officer and the Dark Trooper. The Imperial Officer is okay. He carries a sonic blaster, which is actually kind of like the same weapon that the Geonosians carry around. It's kind of weird that the Imperial Officer would even have this weapon, but I guess it's an okay weapon. He also carries a V6D mortar launcher, which is always fun to use. He has the rage ability that increases the damage that he gives, and like many other units, has a Mark IV recon droid. This unit's alright, I play as him every now and then, he's not my favorite special character, but he is a lot better than the Dark Trooper. The Dark Trooper, on the other hand, has an arc caster, which I really don't like using. I mean, it is kind of a powerful weapon and it stuns the other opponents, but you really can't use it often enough for it to be really effective, so I really don't like using it. He also has an SC 14R light repeating blaster, which those blaster pistols are pretty much pointless, and a beradium core thermal detonator like pretty much all of the other 
Imperial units. He also has a jetpack that, unlike the clone jet trooper, just launches you up and flings you across the map. It's kind of hard to control whenever you use this jetpack, so I really don't like using it. My opinion of this unit hasn't really changed from the last game, so yeah, I really don't use him that much. Now, I haven't forgot about the space units. There are two of them. There is a pilot class and a marine class. For the pilot class, they're literally all the same. Each one has an F-187 fusion cutter and TB-47 time bombs. The marine class, on the other hand, is used to raid enemy cruisers. And each one is equipped with a blaster rifle to combat enemy units and a rocket launcher to destroy ship mechanics. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to talk about with these units are their different variants. So depending on the planet and the environment that you're in, certain units and factions have different variants for each planet. So let's briefly go over those. The Galactic Republic doesn't have too many variants. For the tutorial level on Geonosis, all of the clones are in their Phase 1 armor, which is a contrast from the rest of the game, but the only other unit that have a real variant is the clone Sharpshooter that has a different outfit for Kashyyyk, Felucia, and Mustafar. Other than that, they're all the same throughout every map. The Separatists only have one variant, and that's with the Assassin Droid that has a camouflage paint job on Felucia and Kashyyyk, and a sand paint job on Tatooine and Geonosis. The Imperial units stay relatively the same until you go to Hoth. There, all the units have a snow variant. But the Rebels, on the other hand, have a variant for almost every planet, it seems like. So I'm going to try to go over all of these and hopefully not miss any. All of the Rebels, besides the Rebel Smuggler, the Wookiee Warrior, and the Bothan Spy, have a snow outfit for Hoth, a gray outfit for Dagobah and Polis Masa, a jungle outfit for Yavin 4, Endor, and Kashyyyk, a desert outfit for Tatooine and Utapal, and a Tantive 4 outfit for the Tantive 4 and the Death Star. Alright, so now that I have the units out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about one of this game's most beloved features, and that is the heroes. So unlike the last game, you can actually play as the heroes in this, and they are extremely overpowered and they have a bunch of special abilities. There's two main classes of heroes, you have the heroes and the villains, and each faction has a set of each, so let's go over them. Starting with the light side heroes, the Galactic Republic has Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, Mace Windu, Kiati Mundi, Ayla Secura, and Kit Fisto, but he's only available on Xbox. The Rebel Alliance has two versions of Luke Skywalker, his Jedi form and his pilot form. They also have Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, Yoda, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. For the dark side villains, the Confederacy has Count Dooku, General Grievous, Jango Fett, Darth Maul, Darth Sidious, and Ventress, but she is also only available on the Xbox. And lastly, for the Galactic Empire, you have Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine, Boba Fett, and Anakin Skywalker, or at least the version of him whenever he raided the Jedi Temple. Now, the developers did add one cool Easter egg for the heroes. On Mos Eisley, you're allowed to do a Heroes vs. Villains match. This is called the Hero Assault Mode, and it is extremely fun on multiplayer, especially if you got a good lobby of people, but playing with the AI is also pretty fun. I hope in a new game, whenever it comes out in March, lets you play this mode on all of the maps, because that would be really fun. But speaking of the AI, they are kind of better than last time. You still see them just standing around a lot and just not doing anything, and sometimes they can still be way too easy. But they're still a lot of fun to play against, so I don't really fault them too much. And I'm sure if Battlefront 3 came out, they would have kind of been probably about the same, and I doubt they're going to get any better in the new games, so yeah. Alright, so it's about time that we talk about the multiplayer. Like I said in the video about the first game, these games were designed around being an online multiplayer experience, and both of these captured that very well, and this game especially, because you still find servers that are jam-packed with people in them, and the multiplayer experience is a lot of fun, even though it can be very frustrating at times, at least for somebody like me that's not really good at these types of games. Now, I can almost guarantee you since the classic collection is coming out, the multiplayer functionality will probably be completely eliminated from the original game, so if you would still like to play multiplayer, I would just go ahead and get the classic collection. To be honest, I don't even know if this is still going to be on Steam after that releases, so yeah, we're going to have to see how that plays out. But yeah, I think that's about all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my little retrospective of the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. As soon as I seen the announcement for the classic collection, I needed to go ahead and scramble and make this video really quick, because I do plan on making a video about that too, so stay tuned. But yeah, I hope I did this game justice. But either way, I want to say a special thanks to my super supporters on screen here. They are a massive help for the channel, and their help is greatly appreciated. And if you would like to become a super supporter yourself, go ahead and hit that join button down below and become a super supporter today. With that, you'll get early access to videos and get your name put at the end of the 
these videos like these members here. I've also created a new channel called Nostalgic Plays. This channel will pretty much be dedicated to Let's Plays since I don't want to bring this back on my main channel, but I have been getting a little bit of an itch to do Let's Plays again, so I do have a separate channel for that now. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, and if you want more content like it, please subscribe. Either way, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys in the next video.